Here's part three of our exclusive interview with former Styx lead man, Dennis DeYoung. I'm John Bowden from Rock History Music. Proof of heaven. It's, it, you know what? I'm more of a Buddhist dude. I mean, I was raised Roman Catholic. I know you're Roman Catholic. Yeah. I was when I, I, I talked to Richie Fiore right after uh, Rusty died and I, and I didn't plan this. And I, it's strange. It just blurted out of my mouth. It's kind of like when my brother died. I remember out of nowhere, I opened up his mouth. He's, he's dead. He's on the table. And my mother said, what are you doing? I'm going, I think I'm looking for him. I, why did I just do that? Like, it was weird. Some things. So I'm talking to Richie Fure. I said, where's Rusty? Well, like, I know you're, he's a Christian. And uh, uh, um, John from Orleans, I just did the same thing to him. And I'm going, and then you have this song, Proof of Heaven. And I'm going, well, this is perfect. Dennis DeYoung, where do we go when we die? There's only one question. <clears throat> Why? Why what? What? Why are we here? That's the only question. There are no other questions. You, you answer that one. And here's what I think. You know, I'm not a, as Groucho once said clearly, I, you know, I don't want to belong to any club that would have me as a member. This is what I'm afraid of with human beings. They're joiners. You know, we're gre gregarious. We like to gather. But if the last two years haven't taught, taught us anything, I, nobody knows nothing. Humanity, wake up. We don't know anything. I mean, here's two, two things. One, there's only one rule. Have I said this? I've said so many interviews that feel like I'm doing the same one. There's only one rule. It's the golden rule. Follow that humanity. Things are going to be better. That's number one. Number two, how about this? A little less hubris and a lot more humility. Because if the pandemic hasn't taught us anything, well, then you're just a jack wagon. And it's this. We don't know nothing. That's okay. The, the, here's the sentence I love to read constantly. Scientists were astonished to find. Well, if these people are devoting their life to science, are astonished every other day. And one more thing. Philosophy, you're a Buddhist. Let me get philosophical with you. Well, I'm not Seven. a Buddhist. I'm Buddhist-like. <laughs> Oh yeah, oh, yeah, that's okay. It, it Try Coke Zero, too. So here's the thing. Settled science. Well, there's a Big Bang. Were you there? I wasn't there at the time, John. I, heard, I read about it. I missed it's in, it. In all the papers. Boom. Science was settled. Boom. Science is settled. The only problem is human beings don't know what it is. Because science seems to, to be very large. It's a big thing, science. You know, it's very big. And we, we little poodles, you know, we're sniffing and scratching at the surface of it. And um, if we would just say, you know what? It's scary as hell to be a human. Because unlike your dog who seems to be happy all the time, dogs don't know they're going to die. We do. That's a heavy burden to carry. So all of us are looking for meaning. You, me, all of us. Does, that's how I got to be where I am. I got people you know, idolizing me and putting me on pedestals, pedestals I don't belong on. I said it in the Grand Delusion. I said, be careful. Uh, and that's why we joined groups. So this guy's got to know something I don't know. These people that wrote this book, they know that this politician, this religious figure, I'm in a biker gang. I'm in a volleyball club. I bowl on Tuesdays. We're joiners. We're all hoping that somebody knows something to explain why. Yeah. But he's got that answer. Anybody who claims to have it, I don't care who you are, you don't have it. Maybe we'll get it. Maybe if we do get it, we're not going to like it. <laughs> think about that. Yeah. Maybe the mystery of life is better than the reality of it. This is what I'm thinking. But <clears throat> stop already, human beings. And you know what? This thing that we have in our hand now, the power of kings, this phone. An 18th century king doesn't have that much power as yeah. this thing. Hello. We need editors and filters, and we don't have any anymore. So people are going to just shoot their mouths off continually because they can. And what makes it the absolute most destructive thing is we can do it in anonymity, which means <clears throat> without little consequence. And so I think we're getting philosophical now. We have to bring back the fist fight. Go ahead, say something. Go ahead. 
See, this is what I'm thinking. But when you can say anything you want and you can play to the worst angels in you, people will do this. It's cathartic for them to say, you ain't so much. You're this, you're that. Thin crust pizza, deep dish. Th I hate the people who like. Yeah. This is where Isle of Misanthrope comes from. See how I did that? Write it on the 2060s volume two. Because I watched the political system, the religious systems, all systems failing in real time in the last 24 months with the pandemic. And I said, uh-oh, this is not going well. And I thought, if, if we in this country, because I'm not a Canada by you, you people are nicer and more sensible. Believe me, when all this was going on down here, I kept thinking, you know, Montreal's not that cold. Anyway. <clears throat> We'll have more from Dennis DeYoung coming up in the next three, four days. Make sure you comment on our videos, subscribe to our channel, and share our videos. I'm John Bowden from Rocky Street Music.